we, we both grew up on a farm, independent of each other. Um, I was up closer to El Dorado, a little community outside of El Dorado. And Lisa grew up in Spearsville, Louisiana, which is just across the line from here, about 15 miles from here. Me and my brother both told my daddy, because me and him didn't have any money, you know, we're just getting out of high school type, that if he would buy the land, we'd work it. Well, that's been 30 years ago. Yeah. We've been, we started working. And then Lisa came along and just changed everything. We went from having a farm here to we bought some land in Louisiana, just me and her, you know, bought that. So we've, in the past 15 years, we've gone from running cattle on, you know, 180 acres of land with the chicken houses to running cattle on over 600 acres of land with the chicken houses and the, we started the tunnel house. My dad grew up uh, raising peaches in Spearsville and they had a big peach orchard and uh, from there he he had a, a, a dozer operation and then he started in getting some cattle. Uh, he built uh, four chicken houses and we were young. I see, I was probably about 13 when he built the chicken houses. So we went to work. When I married Phil, we started a very small garden, which is actually where the tunnel houses are sitting now. We started a very small garden just to have something to eat in the house fresh. And from there it went another year. Um, Robin Bridges, the extension agent here in Union County. We met him through Ashland showing cattle. That's and our youngest daughter. Our youngest daughter showing cattle. And uh, Robin Bridges invited us to go see his high tunnel, and we did, and we were astonished at how that worked. Your water conservation, your uh, soil conservation, your uh, limited chemical uh, needs on your plants, and. Anyway, so we decided to look into the NRCS program and we started with one high tunnel. Loved it so much. We applied for another high tunnel. We got uh, another one built. And a few years later, we, we built one more. So now we have three. The high tunnel farming fits in with the cattle farming in the way that you're growing your crops, harvesting your crops, during the slack time of the year for his cattle. I planted in between where my plants didn't make it. I went ahead and put some radish and some beets. And that's a new thing I've never, I've never grown. So I'm trying to fill in the, the spaces and you just, you use up whatever space you can in order to just grow. Because if you're gonna feed something, you might as well feed something that you can eat and grow any time of the year, so. The water drip tape is underneath the plastic. It's down under here, so when I water, it kind of actually waters the sides. This is also lettuce, and then that is radish. I have two different varieties of lettuce growing. That down there on the end is romaine, and this is leaf lettuce. The squash, this time of year, the problem you have having them in this is very humid. So, uh, it's a the, trick to uh, keeping, the, keeping it warm enough, uh -huh. but yet having enough airflow mm -hmm. that you can get enough moisture out so you don't get a, a mildew starting to form. And having plant. enough bees to be working your plants. We're figure, trying to figure out a way now to uh, plant some kind of early, early, early flowers that bees are attracted to. When we plant our 10 acres in Spearsville, we wanna have that blooming and ready to bring the bees in early because the, the early you have your, your watermelon blooms, they really, 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 really need the, the bees. And uh, so that's another work in progress right there. We usually you know, go to farmer's markets there in town in El Dorado and set up at least two times a week in El Dorado. Uh, we went over to Emerson. Yeah, they have a good farmer's market. Had a great market. farmer's market. Uh, but usually about at least four days a week we were somewhere set up and that just halted. 
and we kind of had an idea in the back of our head the year prior that we'd like to have our own farmers market there at the place in Spearsville where the majority of our, our produce grows. Summer, summer crops. Uh, summer crops. So it just kind of pushed us into the, the, the COVID pushed us into going ahead and pursuing it. We didn't really have a choice. So we set up our own market there at the farm in Spearsville, uh, out in the middle of nowhere, Spearsville. <laughs> to, to, Lisa, to Lisa's credit, you know, you can edit that part out, don't you? But Lisa's credit, <laughs> she had a, she kind of had a vision, and we cran planted such a variety of crops that whenever we opened up our own farmers market on our farm, that we had basically anything you'd get at any farmer's market, we had it at our own. Not only did we have all of our vegetables, we have started selling um, our own beef. Um, we we had have freezers where we can actually sell it by the pound, and people liked to be able to do that. Well, yeah, we have just customers. I mean, they're just, just great. I don't know how to put it. I mean. For people to uh, come and trust what you what you say you're doing, I mean, they they put their trust in us that when we say we're treating our animals this way, they trust us to get it done. Which is to me is it makes us you know you have to do it you know you do what you say. And on our on our produce side, I mean they'll. Boy, they just keep coming back. The, the, the same people, and there's every year there's more people coming, and I just don't. I'm just. Just blessed. Yeah. Why do they choose to buy it from us? You know, just we're just blessed to have just good community support. You know, uh, our customers are just we love them. Lisa hugs every one of them. <laughs> I, sh I shake the men's hand and hug all the women that'll let me. But uh, Lisa gives everybody a hug. You know. But uh, just, it's great. I don't know how to put it.